This episode of Trojan TV is sponsored by Susan Rouser State Farm Insurance, helping life go right. Cherryland Autoglass, Northern Michigan's Autoglass professionals. Cool Doors, Whitewater Contracting, the science specialists, and Tandem Wealth Management, moving forward together. We're here with Lillian Taylor. So Lillian Taylor, what were your views on 2020? Personally, I thought 2020 was an okay year. It definitely could have been better, but it also could have been worse. Due to the conflicts that were caused, such as the pandemic and the fires and the riots, um, many people saw it as only detrimental to how people feel about other people and politics, etc. But there were also things that I enjoyed, like there was some music that was um, released and there were also some shows. I'm here with Sophie. So, Sophie, what are your views on 2020? Um, well, 2020 was really rough with um, COVID because I couldn't see any friends. And that was, like, really rough because being home for, like, six months is really rough, especially when you're, like, it's summer. And it's just really hard to do that. I'm here with Addison. So, Addison, what were your views on 2020? Well, it started off, like, pretty rough and... um. I think people could have like kind of tried a bit more because um, a lot of people didn't take like all this stuff seriously, but there still were like some positive like messages and yeah. Um, well, I hope I can see friends again and like I can see my family and I hope that Cherry Fest comes back because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna, but it was shut down last year and it's probably gonna be shut down again. So, what are you hopeful for in the year 2021? I hope 2021 goes better. I mean, it might not have been the worst year, 2020, but it also really wasn't the best. So, I hope people learn to grow and reflect on what we can accomplish, such as um, we moved past a pandemic, and we went through online school, and we can do it again, and we can grow from our mistakes and learn. So what are you hopeful in the year 2021? Um, I would like people to take things more seriously this time. Um, a lot of positive messages and hopefully like COVID starts slowing down a bit and you know. Welcome to our first episode of 2021 Trojan TV. Yeah, but hopefully it's not 2020 with another number slapped on it. Don't jinx it, Cam. My apologies. That's all right, because this episode of Trojan TV is all about 2020. 2020 definitely had its ups and downs, mostly downs, but there were, f there were fun parts for sure. Yeah, and to celebrate the new year, we should look back at all of the good times that we had before COVID hit. Yeah, that's a great idea. Wait, I just realized something. What? 2021 reminds us that 2020 won and beat us. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Good one, Cam. Anyway, I'm not gonna lie, January was not the best start to the year. We had Kobe Bryant and his daughter tragically die in a helicopter accident, the Trump impeachment trial, and the Australian wildfires. But there were some fun things to look back on as well, like music and our favorite shows. Oh, do you remember that one song that took the nation by storm? Oh, great. Don't remind me of blinding lights. I'm getting nauseous just thinking about it. You know, if I ever hear that song again, I'm going to die. But there was some cool stuff happening here at East, like the silent film project Mackie gave us to kick off the new year. Here are a few of the best to look back on.
super fun to make and watch. Now, how about February of 2020? Well, we were all adjusting to the recent YouTube ban. We learned that Ms. Mrs. Unger makes killer chocolate chip cookies, and students were preparing to travel to Japan, which was the first time East was really discussing COVID. And unfortunately, that trip was canceled. What a bummer. But most were still pretty unaware of COVID-19, and things were relatively normal around the halls of East. Until Valentine's Day, that is. Ugh, Valentine's Day. No offense, but that's not my favorite holiday, and it's kind of a sore topic. I know, I hate it too. But luckily, I ended up being pretty cool with this funny cooking video created by Ryan and TJ last year that helped me make it through the holiday just fine. Hi, my name is TJ Foley. And I'm Ryan Grubbs, and today we're gonna show you how to woo your boo with some sweet, sweet Valentine's Day snickerdoodle cookies. So first, you want to preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Yeah. So what you're gonna need is flour, sugar, baking soda, cream of tartar, salt, butter, eggs, ground cinnamon, vanilla extract, sprinkles, and a variety of measuring cups. Now for the dry ingredients. Two and three fourths cups of flour. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get your eggs. Okay, and then we're gonna get one teaspoon that. of vanilla extract. Grab the stir machine thing. Quick, 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 quick. You're gonna now mix the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. My chef boy. Ooh, ow. Be careful. Mmm. Make your doodle. Uh, sprinkles to make it look Valentine's Day. This has been Ryan and TJ baking for Trojan TV. That was pretty funny, and March started off started off with a bang too. Our East Has Talent talent show was a huge success. Book clubs in the library were taking off, and an extra special class activity thanks to Mr. Moore brought some smiles and squeamishness to his students. Let's take a look. On this week's Classroom Spotlight, we are taking a look at one of the most interesting labs of the year, Cowheart Dissections with Mr. Moore. We had the opportunity um, from Max Bauer's uh, meat company that donated the hearts, and I had a, uh, uh, a parent who's a doctor come in and help facilitate uh, the function of a heart. Well, uh, it was interesting. The heart was previously like cut open, so like you had to flip it over and then find all like the key components of the heart and then uh, write them down. Since there was a group of four, you kind of had to like. It was fun because you got to work with the other people. Well, there's several benefits that I think are super important. Uh, first of all, they get to see the real heart, you know, this firsthand approach to seeing how it works and having a doctor come in and actually uh, uh, there was another individual who's a medical school, um, a third year medical school, school student from Michigan State who came in and facilitated it as well. Um, but they got to see the real thing um, and uh, the feel and touch it. But not only that, but we were involving the community. Some students were eager for the hands-on learning while others were a bit squeamish at the thought of having to touch a real heart. It was like, like it was just gross. It was a first time thing I was like, super shocked with everything. I didn't know what was kind of going on. It was like kind of weird, but it was kind of fun at the same time. The heart itself kind of smelled bad, but like the actual experience outweighed that and it was interesting. This has been Ryan and TJ reporting for Trojan TV. Yikes, that was both cool and scary. Agreed, but not as scary as what happened on March 13th. COVID-19 forced the closing of our schools for what we all thought would be a couple of weeks off of school. It was shocking for sure, but at first it kind of seemed like a fun, extended vacation, and we were all ready for early spring break. But then it turned from vacation to nightmare. 
April 2, 2020 was when we learned that the schools in Michigan would remain virtual for the rest of the year. It was honestly the most unsettling thing that has ever happened to me. What a strange time to look back upon. No toilet paper. No cleaning supplies. Empty streets. No sports. Like seriously, I hated that. Concerts were canceled. Everything was in shambles. No friends. Sitting lonely in my room. Imagine having friends. Uh, okay. And adding on to it, lots of people had online struggles. I know I did. I know, right? I helped some of my teachers with theirs. It was a true test of our ability to rise to new challenges. Agreed. And a huge challenge for the DMC was how to stay connected to the student body during the stay-at-home order. And that was the creation of our Trojan TV Quick Takes. It was pretty impressive. The DMC staff created daily newscasts for the staff and students of East all from home. Let's take a look at a few. Hi, it's McKeeley with Trojan TV, where we are committed to covering different topics about the coronavirus. Today, we are going to take a look at some breaking news. Announced yesterday by Governor Whitmore, all schools will be closed until next school year. Well, at this juncture, we think we're probably a good month out from the apex of COVID-19. And this disease is spreading very fast here in Michigan. We still don't have enough tests to really have uh, confidence in that we know precisely how many people are carrying COVID-19. What does this mean? Lots of things are being put into place. All standardized testing is canceled. Standardized testing and like MSTEP and SAT will be canceled. There will be a date in October for rising high school seniors to take that test. And the executive order hinted at a possible early start to the school year next year. So school could possibly start before Labor Day. She says that school districts will have the flexibility to adopt a balanced calendar for the 2019-2020 school year. School workers will still be paid and we will start online school sometime soon. DCAPS communicated that their online learning plan should be ready and approved no later than April 28th. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to get back on track with my schoolwork. I miss seeing everyone, and I hope everyone is staying safe. You can share any thoughts or moments you have by DMing at ECMC or emailing Miss Mackey. See you next week with more Quick Take coverage. Hey, it's Bella with Trojan TV, where we are transitioning to covering the things important to East and its students, including the coronavirus. So today, we're talking about puppies. A lot of people recently adopted new pets, and if you think about it, this is sort of the prime time to get a new furry friend. You have plenty of time at home to train it, spend time with it, and it will definitely keep you occupied. Eighth grade science teacher, Mrs. Conrad, recently got a new puppy, so I talked with her to see how it was going. So, hey, I'm Bella, and I'm here with Mrs. Conrad. So how are you doing? What have you been up to? I'm doing pretty good. Um, well, we got a new puppy here. This was Piper. Um, we've had her for two weeks now. Um, so the kids have been having a lot of fun with her and I bet. took her on a long walk. So she's kind of tired right now. <laughs> okay, what breed is she? She's a mini golden doodle. Aww. I love golden doodles. Yeah, she's super soft. She's a little fuzzball. <laughs> So what made you decide to get her? Um, well, our kids have been begging for a dog for a long time. Um, our daughter especially, we figured up it's been about six years she's been asking. And um, my husband said, you know, if, if we want to get a dog, this might be a good time to do it. We're going to be home and we can train one. So okay. we just kind of did some research on different things and we found this one. Um, she was down in Fort Wayne, Indiana, so it was a little bit of a haul to go get her. Uh, That's cool. So, I actually know a handful of people that have recently gotten a puppy. Oh, My yeah. uncle just got a puppy, and they named him Tucker Coben. Oh. So very, very festive. Uh -huh. So, with all the people that have been getting new dogs, we kind of started thinking that it was the COVID cure, if you will. So how do you feel like getting a puppy has kind of helped you and your family get through this hard time? Um, I think she's definitely been kind of like our bright spot in the day. You know, it kind of gives us like a reason to get up in the morning and just something else to focus on that's um, something more positive. Um, and it's definitely kept everybody occupied with taking her out every hour to go to the bathroom and giving her food and playing with her and, taking her on walks. Um, so yeah, it's just been a really nice distraction 
to all the, the news that's going on. For sure. So is there anything that you would kind of recommend to students or anything that you'd want to say to kind of help them get through this? Um, I think just, you know, try to find things that you're interested in and just change it up a lot. Um, like yesterday, my daughter and I decided to do like a directed drawing like on YouTube and we end up spending like an hour and a half on that. Actually, I think I have it right here. I can show you. It turned out really cool. But just something I wouldn't normally do. But oh, wow. Nice. And that was really fun. So, you know, we've done puzzles and we, um, we made bagels one day. That's another thing I've never done. So just try to look for, you know, if you feel like you're getting in a rut, um, just kind of seek out new opportunities, things to do, and, and stay connected. Um, you know, I've been keeping in touch with people on social media and texting and calling, and that helps a lot too. And getting outside, we've been doing a lot of hiking and biking, and I think just um, not focusing too much on the bad, but try to look for the good things in your life and um, keep yourself occupied. <laughs> Thank you so much. She's so cute. You're welcome. Thank you. I miss everybody. I'm really sad that I won't be able to say goodbye to all of you eighth graders in person. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Here's Reed. Aw. Well, thank you so much again. You're welcome. Bye, Bella. Thank you, Mrs. Conrad and Little Piper. She's so cute. And in our student spotlight, the Tabasco family just adopted a puppy too. Her name is Kona, super cute. It seems like getting a puppy is the perfect thing to cure your coronavirus blues. And that concludes today's quick take from Georgian TV. Stay safe and share your time on our COVID-19 with us through Instagram DM or email to Mrs. Mackey. Have an amazing day. We had so many of those quick takes. We should give a round of applause to the anchors and production team who created 26 Quick Take episodes last year. Now, during quarantine, we had to find creative and traditional ways to pass the time. Remember the Tiger King? YouTube videos about the pandemic and trying to learn new hobbies? Yeah, how about crazy workouts, baking and cooking, too much eating and sleeping, staying up all night? Did your family break out the puzzles, teach you euchre, or insist on family game nights? Yeah, it sounded bad at first, but it really did help. Hey, I actually tried to learn a card trick to confuse my family. Want to see it? Sure. Okay, so I'm, I put down 26 cards face up in a pile like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, so I put them back. I make them all, and I put them back. So, I go one, two, three, put two cards there. That doesn't need to put any, and seven cards here. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three plus 10 plus eight equals 21. The 21st card will be the four diamonds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Cool trick, Ethan. That is indeed the four of diamonds. Now, since we're talking about things that happened during quarantine, one major bright spot was when the DMC won a Spartan Award for the first time since 2015. It was a really cool moment for the DMC staff last year. Let's take a look. Traverse City East. <laughs> Very cool. I'm hoping that we can do it again this spring. Yeah, me too. While the school year came to a close in a mostly boring fashion, with online classes dwindling in numbers of students each day, and everyone was weary from the stress of the pandemic and the transition to online learning, we were ready for a break. But our eighth graders really needed a pickup. They were not getting to have the traditional farewell activities and rituals. It was a sad time for sure. Fortunately, the EMS staff rallied and organized a drive-by farewell for all eighth graders, and it was a great success. The DMC was there to capture some of the highlights. Let's take a look back.
That was pretty cool. I hope that we don't have to do it that way this year, but I'm glad we have it as an option because it still looked pretty fun. Well, I wish I could say that was the end of the 2020 nightmare, but the year just wasn't done with us yet, was it, Cam? No. I mean, the start of online school, going on and off, masks and cleaning, it's been tough for sure, but definitely an improvement from last spring. But it was all worth it to get back to school and seeing everyone. I'm really happy to be back, masks and all. Me too. You know what? After everything we went through in 2020, I'm still thankful for everything it taught me along the way. What about you, Cam? Any final thoughts on 2020 before we leave it far behind? Yes. I am the ruler of Friday Frenzies, and it was my favorite edition of 2020. Thanks to Mackie for making our DMC Online Fridays a blast. Oh my god, stop talking about that! I was the winner before you came along, and you came along, all Mr. Big Shot, and ended up winning every single time! How do you type so fast? It's a secret. <sighs> well, that wraps up this episode of Trojan TV. Stay tuned for more live and online episodes, as the case may be, in 2021. Don't forget to check out more DMC and newspaper coverage on our website, The Link. And make sure to follow us on Instagram, at EastDMC. Have a great weekend, Trojans. Bye! Bye. Swine. I know what music goes, but I don't know the names in ours of songs like you do. You probably spent 24 hours looking online. Okay, what's the name of this song? What's the name? What's the, who's the person who writes this song? You do that all day, probably. Just get good. I don't want to look that up in my free time. I actually have a life outside of school. Imagine having a life. <laughs> well, yeah.